Hello everyone, Dana Don here again with the next progress report on the War Corsair. Uh, last time I talked with you, I uh, was working on the exhaust system and tearing stuff off the engine and configuring everything. Well, I decided to, uh, I need some more parts in order to make the new motor mount. I'm going to need some 5H chromoly tubing and a little bit of half inch tubing. I've got a whole bunch of half inch, but I don't have the correct thickness. I need a 16th inch wall. I've got some, what is it, 029, 030, 049, 058, but I don't have any uh, 062 wall thickness. Uh, that, that makes for a perfect uh, center hole of about 3 eighths of an inch for the bolts that mount the frame to the firewall attach point. So, so I went ahead and decided to go ahead and work on the uh, intake manifold center sections. I pointed out that I had that chunk of six inch aluminum. So the first thing I did is I chucked it up, went in and I uh, turned this piece out. I, first I uh, bored it out to the size I wanted, the thickness I wanted, and then I cut that eighth of an inch uh, lip in there. So it's an eighth inch down, eighth inch in, eighth inch deep. So that's uh, where once I get the uh, center piece made, it's going to be a two inch strip of aluminum uh, bent up on a um, sheet metal roller, a slip roller, be two inches wide, tall, uh, about 18 three quarter inches to get a six inch diameter. And then that will fit, that eighth inch will fit right down over top of this. I need to take this outer edge, this little, oops, drop this thing, this, this edge here, I need to uh, put a, like a 45 degree bevel on it, about a sixteenth of an inch deep all the way around. And then the, that's the bottom. That'll be the bottom of the intake manifold, and this will be the top of the intake manifold. As you can see, I took in. Uh, that kind of looks intentional, the way that's tapered in shape, but it's not. It's literally just uh, to hollow it out to make it lighter to keep the weight down. And as you can see, I machined a groove in there for an eighth-inch O-ring, and then the top has got a slight little groove in it, as you can see on the inside. And then it's got these couple steps on it. Well, this top piece had to be this size to clear these screws. So that piece goes up around here. And as you can see, I've got another O-ring on there. Now that O-ring is meant to fit right inside that groove. So when this all comes together, press that down in there. Where are we touching? Oh, it's hitting the uh, O-ring on the inside. That's why I can't get it all the way down. Um, but either way, when this goes all the way down onto this piece, this O-ring here, well, it fits nice and snug in there to give me a nice good seal. And then this second O-ring in there, these things ring like bells. Hear that? Amazing. Uh, the second O-ring will fall right inside of this groove right here. So that one needs to be a little snugger. So right now, it'll probably go together if I uh, lube this up a little bit. But to make it easier, I'm going to pull this base plate off, chuck it up in a lathe. I'm going to go ahead and it's got a very faint, uh, just a deeper, a tiny little edge around there knocked off. So I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe in the four jaw chuck, center it. I'm going to shave this down some more. I'm going to put a slight taper on that to give it a better point of wanting to go into that O-ring. So when it comes and hits that O-ring, that O-ring's in there, it's bottomed out, and the hole's a little shallow of an eighth of an inch, but it should work out. I mean, that'll push on there if I lubed it up, but i got to make sure it's going to go on there. So I'm just going to give this a little more relief right here so that'll snap on good. And then once this is all together, this whole assembly, this is an inch thick, the bottom's a half inch, so there's inch and a half, and then another two inch, so the whole manifold will be three inches tall. This will be between these two lips, this one and this one, it's going to be exactly inch and three quarter, and that's the size of the tube. So once this is all welded up, and by chamfering this and this, and then the plate itself, the edges, when I weld it up, it'll get some good penetration, then I'll chuck it up in the lathe this way, and I'll take and machine that all the way across, pretty much like I did with my uh, spinner, and polish it all up to where it'll look like one piece. 
Then after that's done, I got to make the plates for the intake manifold to bolt to the cylinder heads, and then I'll get the inch and three quarter manual bent tubes and put them in there and line them up, and then I'll drill two holes in each side, slip the tubes in, weld it all together, and voila, we've got an intake manifold. And then uh, the final step on this is this lip is also good for drilling and tapping and putting two, two or three uh, Allen wrench screws in there. Uh, the Brits and Australians like to call them grub screws, but they're just going to be screws that will come in here and they're going to catch on this smaller flat. As you can see, this inside, this lower edge is smaller than this. This is like 52 millimeters and this is a little over 50, so that's about two inches and this is a little over two inches. But the screws will hold that on there to where it's not going to come off. Uh, so two or three little screws on there, and, and we've got ourselves uh, an intake manifold. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, last you heard, I was I, I showed you my board I uh, put together. Well, I got the Arduino board Saturday, so I uh, put those header pins, like I mentioned, and uh, plugged them into this. This was all pre-assembled, so these blocks, I put those header pins in there and stuck them up through and then had to solder all those all those little connections all the way around there. So, so I got that all done and then I grabbed, I went and got out my cable. I got my new uh, header block that pins in, that uh, plugs into this 40 pin connector and that's all your inputs and outputs. And then there's also other variable places in here for inputs and outputs for other things for 12 volts or 5 volts and the likes. This is the other end of the cap. And this I didn't even know uh, comes apart. So this slides open here. A nice fitting lid. I can figure out how to get it back in there. Nice slip fit. And then this one presses down in there. And then on this cover, uh, it'll have a hole drilled for the uh, map sensor and a little square for this. The 12 volt power supply, I don't need that. I can power it off of this, this cable here. So, and that's long enough that I can use that in the airplane and plug it into a laptop. So, so that's done. And if anybody's curious as to where I got this stuff from, this is the guy here. WM, it's uh, supposed to be a W with an M. Uh, Speedduino is WM Tronics is the, the uh, place in Michigan. If you go to Speedduino, uh, they got a link to this guy's uh, website. So they're in, like I said, Michigan. And those are all the pins for the 40 pin connector. So so that's all ready to go. That I um, was starting to mention. I hooked that all into the computer, downloaded the firmware, downloaded the drivers, installed the firmware into this, loaded in the... Um, uh, what's it called? The software, it's a EFI. Mm, what's the name of that company? Uh, EFI Speed. What the hell is it called? Can't even think of it now. Brain fade. Comes with old age. But uh, it's the interface that allows you to go in and write the program. Well, it turns out that you can download that thing for free, but you've got very, very limited. Um, very limited on what you can do. I mean, you can do everything you need to do for that, but everything has to be entered in the timing tables, fuel tables. Every single block you have to put in by hand, one at a time. Uh, whereas with the um, paid version, you get all that stuff and you can get some pre-filled pre pre stuff in there. So it makes it a lot easier, but it's another 70 bucks for that program. Um, God, I can't think of the name of it now. It's... it's um, but anyway, uh, so I'll have to buy that to make it easier to uh, get this ready. But it, it's up and running. It works. Everything's showing the gauges on the, um, the software. If I um, something, I can't remember, folks. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, that's done. Oh, um, this stuff I ordered and got the new connector for this, and I ordered four new Bosch red top coils, they call them. They're an R8 coil. Well, when I got them, the stems on them were so long that when I plugged them into the cylinder head, they were sticking out of the cylinder head. Like this is my spark plug here. Well, those things come down, they snap right onto the plug, and then that center tube was like clear up to here, and the coil head's way out here. So when I plugged it into the head, they were sticking out of the head like three inches. Sticking out so far, and if I put the cowling on, they won't clear the cowling. I mean, 
those things were sticking out, you know, like this. So there was no way they were going to work. They would, they would clearly, because those um, spark plug wires, when they come out of here, I had to tight, run them tight and turn because they were rubbing on the inside of the cowling. Well, I searched and searched, and I was looking at the uh, LS coil on plugs they use. Not the new IGN 1As, but the, those are big packs. Those are meant for like high boost, high power applications. This is just stock motor. Um, but I was looking at the plain Jane LS coils because you can mount the coils anywhere and it runs a, uh, a short spark plug wire just like these do. When I'm going coil on plug, like I mentioned before, if you lose one plug with the old setup, you lose two cylinders and now you're down probably only 40% of power. So um, I did find out that the newer, not the newer, but newer than this, this is a 95 engine, they have uh, coil on plugs or a three pin connector, so they're still a smart coil. I won't need the inject, uh, ignition drivers to run them. Uh, that little box will control, will trigger the coils directly because the current is two of the leads are power and ground, and the third one is the trigger. So, and then that'll control the dwell. That was my whole problem. And I'll still use, this, again, the stock sensors. But anyway, the um, coil packs will fit in there. They have, I looked at one at the uh, parts store. I went in there and said, hey, you got one of these on the shelf? He pulled it out and they took one of them boots with me. And I think they're going to work great. They'll just plug in there. They do have a, a bolt and a thing to mount, like directly here. I can probably make some little tab to come over and tie it to here and here so they won't work their way out. The ones I did buy them, Audi coils, they actually go on and they physically snap right onto the base of the plug where they won't come out, they won't vibrate out. There's no bolts to hold them down at all. But I think those things still had a little cover that went over them on the valve cover where they has the dual overhead cams. They go down through the center of the valve covers. And then they have a cover that covers them so they couldn't come out anyway. But once I snap that thing on there, it ain't coming off unless you pull it off. Um, these boots are pretty close to the same way. They get down there and fit and seal. So, All right, so then the other thing I did this past week is I re engineering up a way to mount, hold the alternator and also reattach new mount points like this, except for they're going to be round flat pads, like two inch diameter pads here and here. So what I came up with is by using this as my reference point, this, this is the top of the block reference, and then everything's referenced off of this as far as over to all these bolt holes. I'd laid all this out in CAD, but now I'm looking at that 3 8 inch plate's going to bolt right across here. You can see you got these two studs sticking out now. These, this was one of these. And this was uh, the oil drain plugs I bought to make these, you know, like this one. I drilled and tapped it. So what I did is I took the one I had, I bought two of these, drilled and tapped them for 8 inch pipe. So this is uh, fit there. And then I um, took it and drilled it out and put a 3 8 inch aircraft bolt through there long enough that I needed to cut it off and I welded it to the back side of that cap. So that's one of these. Originally had, so I just run a 3 h drill through there, put a bolt in and I welded it to the base of this and then screwed it back in. The only drawback is, is trying to tighten this down good so it doesn't leak or come loose. It has the aluminum crush gasket. Um, but I, I may just put a notch in these where I can use a punch and stake and push them, hit them with a hammer to tighten them up. But once the Plate, the 3 inch plate is going to catch this bolt, this center bolt, and this bolt. And it's going to come up about so high, and the alternator is going to fit in there and pivot. So it does that, and then it's going to have two ears on it for the hard, for the hard mounts, the rubber mounts, to go on that. It'll have a half inch plate on each side of that 3 8 inch plate. And then uh, the actual like combing mounts will fit in there, two of them front and back, and then on the bottoms, but that'll pick up the new frame. The new frame will come down, and again, this is going to be pushed out to here about two inches now. So that mount will will be clear back into here, pretty close to where I'm at now, but it'll be six inches from the firewall, well, a little over six, probably six, three quarters of an inch from the firewall, to the flat pads. And the flat pads are, uh, these are going to be in the exact same position they would if this was a Continental O200 engine. So they'll mount here and here. For the top, and then for the bottom, I mentioned last week. I don't know if you noticed. I did and again. Every time I come back, I got more pulled out. I took all the coolant lines out of the way, and ended up coming in here. See the coolant lines are out of the way now to help this make it easier. But the new, the next mount's going to go right here, 
and right here, same spacing apart. They're not going to be as wide as the original plans for this, but they work the same way. And then the tubes will come up from here to the base of that and that. And the top one's going to come down to it and everything. But it's, it's going to fit a whole lot nicer. So one here and here. And then what I've done now is I've got this all drawn up to cut out of that three-quarter inch plate. But now all I'm going to do is run out a two inch. It's going to come out of here two inches wide and comes out to the distance. You know. So it's going to have ears on it. It's going to come and fall around here, stick out square and around and back. And, and then that I'm going to be bolting on a piece of three-eighths inch thick, two and a half, basically three by three inch aluminum angle, three-eighths inch thick. And it'll stick straight down, but it'll be bolted to that three-quarter inch plate here. And then that'll be drilled, and, and those will be your two mounting pads. And then that plate's going to stick out the exact same dimension as this point here. So these will all be in perfect alignment. The four pads will be straight up and down, all out about six inch, six and a half, seven inches from the firewall. And the motor will, will just bolt right onto that with four bolts. And then this, there'll be the mount will be similar to this, but there'll be a brace going from here down to that pad, brace from there to this pad. Same thing on that side. There'll be a, another little hoop like this towards the top, just enough to kind of clear over because it ties them together. And then there'll be a, and then there's a crisscross pattern like this, but it's all tucked in closer to the motor. So what that does, that's going to really open up this whole firewall. This is going to be clean out of the way to where I can put my oil tank up here, the battery up here, oil tank. But I can probably move the battery in the oil tank up there, and by pushing that out two inches, again getting rid of that, bolt prop right to it. It should be a much cleaner installation than that intake is going to set here. And as you can see from the last time, I took off that fitting here, which was a 45, and I was looking at this. So let me go grab my little can here, my carburetor. I just got back from doing a little over four hours of Ubering today. I need some more money. Running out of money again. But this is going to be, with this set up here like this, this thing's going to be fairly low. And I've got nice clearance the way this thing is routed now. And then my oil pressure gauge is over there. And then the oil temp, the oil temp can probably go right into this one. I'll have to buy another one of these and modify it to put in here. But the oil temp, because the alternator is going to be up in here and it's going to be up, up higher than this, it's, it should clear. I can put it there 